In this brief tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to use a for loop in R. So what we're going to do is we're going to first ask the user to input a number. I'm going to copy some code in. So really, we're going to say variable user number, assign it to, once again, read line, asking them to enter a number between 1 and 10. Okay. What we're going to do is, is we're going to convert that number to an integer for evaluation. So we talked about that in a prior tutorial. If we want to actually use a number from a user input, we want to make sure we convert it over. So I'm going to say converted user number. And we're going to basically say equals as.integer. And we're going to put in the variable user number. Okay, So I'll put a comment there, convert the user input to uh, integer, which is a whole number. Okay, What we want to do now is we want to use basically a for loop. Okay, um, So in the case of working with R, for loops are a little strange. Uh, so there's just going to be this thing called um, seq underscore along or sequence along essentially so sequence along abbreviated uh, it's going to look like this i'm going to put a comma here seq underscore along it's a built-in function and so we're going to put a comment a built-in function which is known as a vector but basically creates a sequence of numbers from one to the length of the object. So watch how this works. So we're going to create a for loop. We use for and similar to other languages we'll establish a variable. I'll use n1 in this case and we're going to say in and we're going to say sequence along here. Okay and we're going to use our one, number one and we're going to say our converted user number here. Okay. So that's going to be our for loop. Essentially what this is going to say is essentially go with starting at 1 and go up to the number that the user entered. And then we're going to have a curly brace and then we're going to have some statements in between. So what we'll do here is we will print your number is and if you remember the paste command from a prior tutorial, we paste two things together for an output. So we're going to say paste your number is comma. And then we're going to put our variable n1 there. And we're going to see what that looks like. OK, and we'll close that parenthesis. So what this will do as it goes through the for loop is it's going to basically print out the number starting at 1 all the way up to whatever I enter for as a user. So I'll put my cursor up on line 3 and we will click the, I'll make sure my console is clean and we'll click the run command asking for the number between 1 and 10. I will type in 5 and click run and you'll see it does the conversion as we step through. And the for loop executes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's how sequence along works. Now, we can nest loops inside of them, one another. So if we wanted to have a secondary for loop, we could certainly put one in there. So just like we saw in other tutorials in other languages, sometimes you have programming needs for that. So there's nothing stopping you for putting other types of loops inside of the for, a nested for loop, uh, anything along those lines. So Let's say I wanted to do something where I count instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, maybe I wanted to uh, do another number for user input. Um, you know, let's say user number 2 and enter a number between 1 and 5. Now, we're not ver verifying the input or anything like that. 
So we're just going to just show you how we can nest a for statement. So I'm going to copy paste here. Just be careful with copy paste. You update everything accordingly. I'm going to take this for statement here as well. And of course, I'm indenting my code. So we make sure that we see that this for statement is executing inside of the other one. And we're going to call this one your next number is and we'll call this n2 and we'll do that as n2 and we'll make sure we use converted number two so without all the comments here but i'll put a comment in nested for loop so what we're going to see is we're going to see the outer one run okay asking us to showing us a number asking us for user input and then doing an inner loop um, presenting that number uh, the same way as what we saw from the first one. So what I'll do is I'll use the broom, clean this up. I'll also clean up my variables over here. If you ever watch them, that's a good way to debug and to test, see what's going on. So we'll click run. Let's see if this actually executes like we hope. So we enter a number from 1 to 10. I'm going to do something simple, 3. I don't want to run this through 10 times. I'll click run. And then we'll see that it prints out your number is 1 the first time through, asking me to enter a number between 1 and 5. I'll enter a 2. We'll keep the inner loop short 2. Click Run. You see that goes 1, 2. Then it goes with the outer loop to 2. I'll enter 3 this time. We'll click Run. We'll see 1, 2, and 3. Then it hits the third time through the outer loop. Um, I'll hit 4 this time just for testing purposes. And now it's done. One, two, three, four, and we're done. So this is how you use for loops in R, and this is how you nest them in the case that you had a reason to nest your for loop. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Please, if you have any questions or comments, put them below. I hope you subscribe for future tutorials on various programming languages like this one. Thank you.